Hello and welcome to Basel Tov, the courage and creativity of ADHD. I'm Jen. I'm Ellen. And I'm Annette. And we're here after taking a very lengthy summer break for many reasons. And we're back to tell you what the hell we've been up to, why the hell we took a break in the first place, and uh, why we're so bad at communicating it. Yeah. Hey, how about that? <laughs> Um, so cheers to lack of dopamine, short attention spans, and ADHD. Let's see, Yay. where should we begin? <laughs> We've um, all kind of had some fun things happen to us over the summer. And once they started piling up with all three of us, we just kind of made a unanimous decision that summer break was going to suck this year. There were There would be no fun romps on the beach for any of us and that we were just going to claw our way through it the old-fashioned way with our teeth gritted and our buttholes puckered um <laughs> so, so accurate that, yeah <laughs> and um every time something would go wrong we just kind of bend over and scream thank you universe may i have another and oh. <laughs> and and then it happened unfortunately um, Should have relaxed so, that butthole, you know, yeah, no. take, make it easier. It would have been, a, it would have been, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty on that one. Yeah. Hindsight, <laughs> brumch. Oh my god. Hey, uh, oh, so, we're back, baby. Us, we're back. <laughs> and where did we go? Well, who wants to go first on this one? Oh man, you got okay. You guys, I, I feel like I had it easy compared to you this summer. So why don't you know? why don't we go easy, e easy to hard? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll do that so that nobody's <laughs> gently. <laughs> well, Let's ease everyone into this with just the tip. Go ahead, Ellen. Yes, I mean, I guess the the worst thing that happened to me was I I lost my job at the bakery. That was unfortunate. It was just uh, they had to lay off some staff because of budgeting concerns so uh that uh happened uh but uh, you know other than that nothing really changed too much in my life oh, i would say what about the poop water basement though oh god yes my basement did flood with poop water for the second time that was uh, no. that was unfortunate <laughs> yeah i finally got that fixed yep oh god cleaning that up Ugh. is never fun but uh yeah got that taken care of and uh had some great times with my kids this summer you know we uh, i took them to portland and so that was fun but it's really good to be back with you guys though oh i know mm -hmm. i missed you guys so much over our break um it's amazing <laughs> to be did back you, did, did the kids get to meet your boyfriend yeah they did they'd yeah. actually met him another time when he visited me but we got to hang out with my boyfriend and his daughter who's just a year older than my daughter and so it was it was great for the kids to hang out and we had a little slumber party and so much fun oh, oh that sounds great. Like fun yeah yay yay okay so I don't know which one of you has it worse right now oh, I know <laughs> Should we like flip Jen. a coin? No, I would yeah. say it's Jen. I think Jen I... definitely has the upper hand on that one. So oh, I mean, not by a whole lot. I mean, yours is still pretty. <laughs> Just different. We're all in different places in life. Yeah, so N Nettie, like... Nettie, what what's been going on with you? So before we even took a summer break, um, I had part of my uh, hellish summer had already been put into place. Uh, at the end of June, my father was arrested by the FBI for uh, distribution and uh, possession of child pornography, and uh, which I know he didn't do. And people will say, oh, but you never know. People do things. No. Uh, if you know my father, this is he definitely did not do this. Now, the background on that is that my father is a software developer and he worked on government systems and uh, he worked for a company and he just recently retired. He was forced into retirement. And then as soon as he was retired, boom, this happened. So uh, 
basically we didn't know any of the details we didn't know you know if he was gonna come home or and uh, apparently because of the nature of the crime they refused him bail so my mom is all alone in her oh. house. and uh, poor mom and yeah, your poor dealing... dad well yeah my dad dad is adjusting he still yeah. has hard times but i had to i had to drop everything find a lawyer and um you know i'm still having to deal with a lot of things for my family and keeping everybody up to date and you know what's going on and but right now his trial is set for november 5th but the lawyer said that that's not a good day for him so that will be pushed off a little bit more so during that time whenever the trial ends up being i will be mm -hmm. going back to the states but you know i'm kind of hoping that they find something in discovery that you know just gets the case dismissed is what i hope for because you know my da my dad is like the least creepy guy in the entire world and you two have known him forever oh so. yeah yeah yeah. Yes. And, so they're and still when doing discovery? Well, the prosecutor turned over discovery. Now the lawyer and my dad are going through the discovery. Oh, and, okay. You know, okay. taking a look at it and processing it. But what my dad had thought it was, was he was doing some research um, using peer to peer networks. And he thinks he might have gotten hacked, but then what he thought he might find, he didn't see in the first set of discoveries. So he was really uh, disheartened and, you know, he was, mm. you know, he, he basically told my mom, you know, because I don't know if anybody knows about the laws on child pornography, but to even have it in your possession is a crime in and of itself. So whether or yeah. not somebody hacked your computer or not, the fact that it was on your computer, you're already guilty of possession. Mm. So we don't know how to fight that particular uh, charge, but um, mm -hmm. the other one, distribution, if we can show that he was hacked and that's how the distribution was happening, then maybe they'll throw out the possession charge as well. But we have to figure out how to do that. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have to hire an expert witness and we have to finish going through all the uh details and my dad can't say anything to us because every phone call he makes every person he talks to except his lawyer when his lawyer physically goes to the jail it's all being recorded and it's all uh -huh. being listened to by the prosecutor so you can't say anything so you can't tell your family what's going on you can't you know all mm -hmm. you can do is talk about your feelings or talk about other other things you can't get help Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the other thing that had happened was that my dad, my dad has diabetes and he has heart disease and, you know, his health is not good. Well, they took his medications with him when they arrested him. But once he ran out, they didn't reorder it. So my dad was not getting his blood thinners. And oh, no. that, that set off his atrial fibril fibrillation. So he was just exhausted halfway through the day. And then they're yeah. feeding him like carb heavy foods because everybody thinks that people in jail uh, eat really well. No, people in prison oh, no. eat well. The federal prisons, they feed their prisoners much better. This is a county jail that my dad is in. The, he's in, in a federal, like he was arrested for a federal crime and he's being held under federal statutes. But he's being held in a county jail. And so mm. the food is crap. My dad's diabetic. Then they weren't giving him his, his insulin properly. They didn't refill his medicine. So uh, I went ahead and made a big stink. And uh, I called. As the, you should have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I called the governor. I called the representative for their area. I, you know, I said, mm -hmm. this is happening in your jails. I called mm -hmm. the jail and launched a complaint. I had other people call the jail and launch a complaint. I had other people call the governor. And uh, actually, my ex-husband used his, uh, he's, a, he's in the Air Force, and he's an officer in the Air Force, and he contacted 
the governor using his own letterhead and nice. basically said you need to look Very into nice of him. this and you need yeah mm -hmm. you need to look into this and you need to see you know what's going on here so the representative for their area ended up making a well call um so went you know and had his staff go to the jail and look into it found that he wasn't being treated properly with his medications finally the jail asked for a list of his medications and his doctors so now they're giving him his insulin on time and now they're giving him his medication on time but they didn't so wow uh, yeah that's so really that dangerous happened. yeah uh, my mm -hmm. mom my mom was like crying and talking to me and basically like yeah. they're trying to kill him they're trying to kill your dad and I was oh. like, yeah, kind of they are. I mean, the way that they're treating him, I can't imagine anything else. And I bet that's not it, the first time that's happened there. I bet that happens to a lot. No, of you people. know, a, a lot of people go into jail and they don't come out. Mm -mm. And yeah. nobody, I don't think enough people are talking about this. Mm -hmm. But I have a friend of mine in California and her brother was arrested for a bar fight and then ended up dying in a Redding Jail, Redding, California Jail, days later. This oh, is unfortunately I I talking about. a story so, that is yeah, you not way. Do. No, you probably mm. do. Yeah. Daniel's oh. wife. Daniel's wife. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. no. So. Um, yeah, this is yeah. unfortunately a story that is way more common than anybody wants to think it is. Um, and, you know, the, there are different minority communities out there in the, the BIPOC community, especially black people who have been trying to ring this bell about, you know, prison issues and jail issues and, you know, issues within the criminal justice system. And, you know, there are some of us who do read it and we know it, we've, we've known it for a while, but a lot of sadly, mostly white families do not understand the burdens that are placed on the families of people who are in jail or prison and they don't understand no. how their family members will be treated so it comes as quite a shock and um yeah. you know they they've been hearing for years like little whispers of like oh the prison system is unfair unjust un inequitable and you know for people who let's face it are on the top of society they don't have to check into those things. They don't have to worry their heads about it. But this is something that everybody should really, you know, think well, about because it could be your family member if somebody just makes one terrible mistake or well, listen, if they even have somebody like, else frame them for somebody <laughs> for something that was terrible. <laughs> but here's the thing. OK, so my parents are not poor. OK, they're not rich, but they're not poor. Okay, they're comfortably middle class, is what mm -hmm. I would say. They're middle class or upper middle class. Okay. Did you know you have to pay to talk to somebody in the prison? Mm hmm. I did know that because I, I well, it's not even but then collect. again, I, it's not even I job shadowed anymore. in prisons or not in a prison, yeah. but in a in the county jail. And, and I've, um, I worked in military law enforcement. Did you know at you one have to buy life. your own pillow and buy your own blanket? And by like they don't provide that for you. Ooh, you that's a freeze that's your a, ass off in that's until a somebody state. that's in that state, by the way. In Oregon they do provide those things. Oh well that's nice of Oregon. Yeah, so but yeah. you're not guaranteed that. So know your rights when like mm -hmm. you know you, This is Mississippi, you, right? Yeah. But even if you don't, even if you don't think that you'll ever be arrested, look up what the prisoners' rights are just mm -hmm. in case you do get arrested because we had to set up a fund for dad to be able to buy basic 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 things mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh every time he calls like we have to pay and it's not collect and they take like every time you charge like you you put a hundred dollars onto a calling card they they take a eight dollar fee just for fuck all and then mm -hmm. uh convenience every, fee yeah and, and then it, it's charged by minute and it's so expensive so oh. people who are who come from poor families you can't afford that my my mom is paying mm -hmm. like 
a hundred bucks, 150 bucks, like every two, two weeks or every week, maybe to be able Ooh. to have the privilege of talking to her husband every day. Wow. Right. And imagine, you know, families who are strapped for cash, who, you know, are collecting change out of their drawers to get gas for the week. Like, you know, families like that are going to be at a severe disadvantage if somebody, if a member of their family ends up in the jail system or the prison mm -hmm. system. Well, they and... get forgotten. Those men get forgotten. They get thrown yeah. into jail and then their family can't do anything about it and they get forgotten. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Especially if they don't have pearly white skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like my dad was literally told by a lot of the guys, like, don't be surprised if your wife stops calling. Wow. Like, don't wow. be surprised if, you know, th that starts to go or she has a wandering eye or things like that. And my, my dad, it, it really hit him and kind of sunk in and like, you know, he was having some depression. My mom's like, dude, I'm not going to do that to you. Like my mom's Aww. not that kind of person. My dad's not that yeah. kind of person. And so like, this whole experience has been so eye-opening until I got yeah. a massive eye infection this summer. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then your eye yeah. was closed again. Yes. That's why, I'm, that's why for anybody watching this, uh, I'm not wearing any makeup today because I can't. I don't, uh, I can't put any eye makeup on yet. I, I, I had a sinus infection. The, the bacteria just wandered aimlessly from my nose in, you know, my sinuses into my eye and how nice. Yeah. yeah. But, Lovely. Uh, <laughs> and uh, kids have been sick and, you know, yeah. uh, my Cause you guys English got COVID teacher, too, didn't you? Over yeah. the summer. <laughs> Boom. There's another one. <laughs> so, oh. but like, but it hasn't all been a shit storm. I mean, it's been a pretty bad shit storm, but, uh, you know, I, at least this whole experience, it kind of like woke me up to like the fact that I haven't been dealing with my stress properly and my health mm. hasn't been so good. And, you know, I'm exhausted. And so I'm putting in some guardrails in my life and I'm, I'm, I'm making some moves that I didn't think I could. I haven't had any alcohol for almost a month now. And wow. uh, yeah, so you know, and it's not, it's not that I'm saying, well, I'm never going to drink any alcohol again, but I, I have realized that I don't need it. And I mm -hmm. actually, I'm, my mental health is so much better without it. And I'm able to feel things and deal with the feelings that I have in a much healthier way than I could when I was just trying to drink away, even feeling anything. So, but, yeah, you know, great. it really, it needed, it, mm -hmm. I needed this like shock. So it's like, you know, kind of the good thing that came out of my dad being arrested was that, you know, I was shocked into such a state of stress that, you know, I really realized that how I was coping was not that, uh, you know, it wasn't going to hold back the dam. And so that's why uh, I love the word I, crisis, because it means to sift. And so it's like, yeah. anytime you go through a crisis yes. in your life, it just sifts everything. Only the important stuff remains once you've been shaken up. Yeah. yeah True. It's good. It, in I a know. way, it hurts. Yeah, it hurts, but it is good for us. It's like cleansing, yeah. I guess, you know, gets the bullshit yeah. out of our lives. Yeah. And I've just been running to the mountains. I know. I'm so every... glad you've been hiking. <laughs> I'm jealous. Yeah, I... I, I need to do that myself. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm just, I'm like, see ya, you know, it's, yeah, it's been uh, good. good therapy for me. But, uh, last week I went with my husband and, uh, I love my husband, but <laughs> my husband, not in the best shape. Oh, so, no. <laughs> what, what would have been a four hour hike and I probably would have finished it at about four hours or a little under, you know, to get that. You know, I'm usually a little faster than average on my little hiking uh, application thing. Um, but uh, what was supposed to be a four hour hike ended up being a seven hour hike. Ooh. And um, yeah, I basically at the end of the day told my husband, I'm just not listening to your opinions anymore. Because 
<laughs> because he, I, I said, let's leave by five. At five o'clock, he was still sleeping. So I wake him up. I'm like, yo, five o'clock. And he's like, I'm going to take a shower. So he takes a shower. We get in the car. I'm, I'm, I'm a little just like, Ugh, okay. But I got my coffee and I, I got a pumpkin spice latte. Fuck yes. you all haters. And <laughs> I just, I've had one like, too lately. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. I'm going to the mountains. I'm going to be happy because that's my place. So I put in the uh, GPS and my husband looks at it and he goes, that's wrong. And I'm like, no, it's not. And he's like, yeah, it is. When I checked yesterday, it was only two hours to get to the mountain. I go, babe, did you check all the way to the trail parking lot? <laughs> and he said, oops, no. And I was like, hmm, maybe that's why I wanted to leave at five. Mm -hmm. and he goes oh I understand <laughs> so, I, uh, okay. so we get there there's like almost no parking I magically found a parking place we were great and so I was like and then uh, we start hiking my husband has to take a lot of breaks which is that's fine I figured I figured that you know mm -hmm. he drank half of my water and all of his water so it's oh, lucky no. that I brought my uh, my aquifer into my bag back but <laughs> yeah but uh we get back down and i always get this i always get a badge because i'm doing these 100 famous mountains of japan challenge so i have 100 Ooh. mountains that i have to climb and i get a badge for each one and i have this like curtain that i with all of the mountains names and elevations and i pin my badge nice this yes every time well by the time we finished it was like five o'clock and the shop was closed so i couldn't find no. the match <laughs> oh no and oh then... no you're <laughs> kidding me no. oh i'd be so pissed oh I found yeah it on... i found it on the internet so okay but... good so you're gonna get your badge yeah i got yes. it i got it okay thank good. you amazon Phew. thank you okay i'll relax Corpor now thank you corporate overlords but um <laughs> <laughs> like so then we get into the car and i put in going home and all of the highways have like major traffic jams and so the, no. the the highway and just taking the back roads was about the same time and i'm like mm, maybe we should just take the back roads because then we could save on the freeway because in japan you have to pay tolls to use the freeway mm. and so it would save like like $30 or something if we oh, wow. just took the back roads and he goes, no, 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 don't believe it. The, uh, the, the highway is always faster. Uh, and I was like, hmm. okay. so we get on the highway, hit the traffic. It's two and a half hour, uh, traffic jam for like 14 kilometers. So for 14 oh, kilometers, oh. which is like seven miles, something like that. It took two yeah. and a half hours. Wow. So, Whoa. Which, what it said would be a three hour and 58 minute uh, trip ended up being a five and a half hour trip home. <gasps> so oh back roads would have been faster. And so at that point, I just kind of said, yeah, no, I'm not listening yeah. to you anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you learned. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> but other Sometimes... than that, I mean, you just kind of have to listen to somebody who's driven there before and maybe knows things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and so this week, um, because there's two mountains that are both here, the hundred famous mountains that are right next to each other. And if it was just me, I would have hiked both of them in one day and you know, mm -hmm. it would have been good, but I knew, I knew my husband couldn't do two. Like that yeah. was never going to, that was never in the cards. And so uh, this week I told my husband, I was like, I really love you, but on Sunday, I'm going to go climb this other mountain and I'm going to go by myself. Yeah. Aww. I'm sure he understood. <laughs> He's like, that's yeah. okay, I'm still sore. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're more into hiking than he is anyway, but that was really sweet of you to take him with you. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. he wants to take videos and make YouTube videos. So I don't know. Oh. But he, so he told me, he goes, Take the GoPro. Mm -hmm. So now oh, I'm oh. going to be just the goat going up the mountain with a GoPro, <laughs> I guess. Nice. But yep. I mean, 
Uh, feel free if anybody's into hiking and you want to see what hikes are like in Japan, you can follow me on Instagram, Mediyama, or uh, yeah. on TikTok. So, yeah. Yay. Yeah. Hiking awesome. is good. Pictures too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, torture, sometimes I torture my children with it too. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yes. Okay, Jen, tell us the shit storm of your summer. <sighs> Oh, okay. Summer shitstorm. We're we're doing this. Um, but first, I do want to you know, to validate something Annette said earlier about her parents. Um, they are some of the sweetest people on the face of the earth, and mm -hmm. I I'm one of those people that you know when I was growing up, some of my friends' dads were really super creepy with me, and never ever was Annette's dad super creepy with me not even once um you know he's just not the kind of when she says he's not this kind of person and if you know him you would know that I know what she means by that it's hard to explain but he's extremely honorable to a fault and um I just wanted to like put that out there so that she wasn't the only one saying it <laughs> um Thank because you. when you're welcome. I it's when you get into a situation like this, you kind of feel sometimes like you're the only one who's, you know, saying all this stuff and like how would anybody else believe you because they have no basis to believe you and um yeah. you know there there is a loaded charge. It's such it a is. loaded charge. It's loaded mm -hmm. People and hear it, that they hear that word. They hear child yeah. pornography and they just already form an opinion. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I did yeah. too. I'm guilty. There's, yeah, there's a lot of bias when it comes to it. And, you know, be the most natural reaction is to be like, well, what if it is a real thing, you know, and oh, my God, and then and it puts the doubt in you. But, you know, her, this, this is just not the kind of person that like, I, it just, it's, it's all wrong here. <laughs> There's nothing, mm -hmm. there's not a single piece of this that really fits too well. And, and I think that's the most frustrating part of it. And the kind, you know, the, the thing that we were all kind of agonizing about separately and mostly Annette, because this is her family. Um, but, you know, we've known, we've known him for a long time too. And so we were all just kind of like, wow. Mm -hmm. And it, it felt like everybody was hit was, you know, sent for a loop for a second there, for sure. Um, but as far as my own hellish shitstorm of summer, <laughs> well, let's see, it all started back in 1965. No, <laughs> um, that's like what it feels like by now, is it started mm -hmm. decades before I was born or something. But I, this year, I turned 41 uh, this last spring and they were like, oh, you haven't had a mammogram yet. So you get you get to go in for a mammogram. And later on, we're going to schedule you for a colonoscopy. And look at all this fun you're going to have. And I was just like, great. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> you know, like That's kind of what you feel like when you go in for your first one. And, you know, so I went in. And to be honest with you, like I have heard so many horror stories about mammograms and squeezing your boobs and like how horribly painful it is. Guys, it is really not that bad. Like I have very large and very dense breast tissue. And even like, even at like maximum pressure, it's not that bad. It really is not. It's I agree. Just, yeah. Yeah. Like it was it tolerable. the machine, yeah, it digs into your sides. Mm -hmm. And Ellen did her first one this year too. And so mm -hmm. we were kind of commiserating a little bit. <laughs> like, oh, uh, you, yeah. you know, you got to spend this time in your day and whatever. And I felt like it hurt my ribs more than my actual boobs. So I was actually like a little annoyed when I left. Like, why did everybody try to scare me like this? What is this? I had nothing to be afraid of. I went in for this thing, you know, absolutely nothing to be scared of here. So um, just like they told me, they gave me a call back and said, hey, we need you to come in for a second one, because whenever you have your very first mammogram, you usually get called in for a second one. <laughs> and that's because they have no pictures of your breast tissue from before. So they can't compare any of the any of the things that they see in there to something from last time. So they want to take two instead of just one, unless you have 
breasts that are not dense yeah unless your breasts are not Mm. dense and they just look like this the classic perfect beautiful breast tissue that medical doctors like to see and most people you know have varying cellular architecture so you might get a call back so i wasn't actually like upset about this at all i was like whatever i'm just gonna go in they're gonna squeeze my boobs again no big deal well unfortunately that's not how it went (laughs) so they went in and said hey we really do not like the look of this spot here and when they turned the screen around i could see pretty immediately what they were talking about there was a very large spot on on mammography and i saw immediately what they were you know like even to my untrained eye i was like wow okay so um they they were like okay so we need you to come back for an ultrasound okay cool i come so um i scheduled it for like i want to say like four days after that or something a couple days later my grandmother died and i was like that's right yeah and she was 99 years old so much like bob barker she didn't go over 100 um Mm -hmm. and she um you know we we kind of had to deal with that as a family and then i went back for my ultrasound and they said okay so this doesn't look as bad as it looks on mammogram but it still looks pretty darn bad and it's making us very nervous and we want to take a biopsy of this and i was like oh oh this is real this is this is getting real now mm-hmm. okay So I scheduled a core needle biopsy, which if you guys don't know what that is, it's a 14 gauge needle, which is similar to the needle where you go into a piercing shop and maybe, you know, get a belly button piercing. And they shove that into your breast tissue and they have something that goes inside of it that basically takes little noodles of skin or of tissue out of the middle of your boob, wherever it is that they see this spot. So they numb you up for it with lidocaine, but they didn't give me enough. So I felt it. Oh, <laughs> no. it when you feel it, it's not nice, guys. It's, um, it's, it, it just is. Ow. There's no way around this. It stings. It burns. It hurts. Uh, yeah. You just, you want the lidocaine to work. The gettification of the titties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I called them boob noodles and I looked at them in the little uh, form. Oh. <laughs> So, oh of God. course, because I'm so mature, I, oh I came up with a God. nickname for them. Um, so, you know, Ow, I got them taken out. They just kind of, they don't have to bandage you up much. They just put a Band-Aid on you, and then they give oh. you a little boob ice pack, and they tell you to, you know, keep icing it every every 20 minutes for 20 minutes. Um, and, you know, that way the inflammation goes down from all of that loveliness. But to add salt into your already sore titty wound they make you do a mammogram after you've done the biopsy because they mark it with a little marker ow (laughs) but the good news is the lidocaine is still working by then so you literally feel nothing (laughs) wow oh my god yeah now that we've stabbed you we're gonna smash your boob I know. Well, not I only was... stabbing, not only stabbing, taking a chunk of I your know. flesh chunks, out. Guys. Yeah, took chunks, guys. Um, <laughs> so then they squish you again, and um, they have to use, they, they luckily use a lighter weight because they're not looking for anything anymore. They're just making sure that this tiny little seed marker that they put in there is in place. And they put one of those in there just in case they have to go back in there for any reason in the future. So um, like if, if it grows, they'll know, Hey, we were watching this spot before and it looks bigger now. Um, so then a couple of days after that, I got a call and they said, Hey, you've got a rare lesion inside of your breast called um, a radial scar. And actually, because mine was so large, it technically has another name, complex sclerosing lesion. Um, And it was a, you know, typical architecture, although there was something about it that was still kind of making them feel really weird. Like, They're like, yeah, it said this, but with core needle biopsies, there's a fairly high likelihood that that we've missed a malignancy in there. 
um, because it's only a tiny needle and the size of the of the lesion was over four centimeters. So if you mm -hmm. have that much space that you're dealing with and you're dealing with this tiny little core biopsy needle, you're going to be missing a lot of area. And unfortunately, yeah. the presentation of this on mammography looks identical to invasive carcinoma. So they can't look at it and say, well, this is obviously a, um, a radial scar. That's not what happens. They're, they're like, hey, this looks like cancer. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, but there was still like a spot in there that they said worried them even more because it looked even stranger than the rest. And I was like, oh, well, that's nice to hear, guys. So then they wanted to do an excisional biopsy, which is also called a lumpectomy, where they take it out. <laughs> they just mm -hmm. take your, they open you up, they take all of the lesion out of your breast, and then they close you back up. And, um, and then they biopsied it and it was your twin. Then, yes. <gasps> then I, they found out that I had a twin and I absorbed it and it was just in my boob the whole time. Amazing. Wow. Um, by the way, if you guys know much about biology and how women um, actually form, you would know that that's impossible. Um, uh. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, back to the real science. <laughs> but that was <laughs> excellent garbage science. It was. I'm impressed. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Here, I'm evolving. <laughs> yes. So um, you, you got the lumpectomy? I did. I had a surgery over the summer. It yeah. does take a little while to heal. It. Um, I have a feeling it's more painful for other people because I'm really good at ignoring pain and I don't have typical pain responses. So like I can sustain a pretty interesting kind of injury. And depending on where the location is, it might not hurt at all and I might not feel it. Um, mm. And that's something that was passed down to me from my dad, who also has a very similar way that he experiences pain in a random sporadic ways. Hmm. So instead of feeling like, oh, my God, it's so sore and it, you know, it, it's throbbing or whatever. Most of the time I felt nothing until all of a sudden I would feel a stabbing shooting pain. <laughs> Mm, and mm -hmm. that would cut through any kind of medication I was on. I'd just be like, oh my God, I've been stabbed. <laughs> like, Ow. It's just mm. random. And then it would go away as quickly as it came on. And I'd be like, wow, that was such a strange episode. Um, or Oof. like, and it would just happen, you know, randomly over time. Sometimes it still happens um, where I'll have a random stabbing pain, even though I'm, you know, mostly healed up i think there's probably tissue inside that's still fully healing um but mm -hmm. you know it's been more than a month now and um and so it's it's pretty healed it's fairly healed but um there's still some stuff going on there like i can tell that there's just a little bit more swelling in there that's going to go away at some point um, the tissue kind of like the, she did a really good job with it. And, um, you know, it's really minimal scarring. It looks like, um, for now and, and, you know, there's just a few differences in the appearance of everything. And I'm fine with all of that because, you know, I'd rather have that stupid lump out of there. Yeah. Man, <laughs> yeah. why do our boobs have to betray us like this? What the fuck? I don't know. Right? I know I, I did understand. what they Our, tell you is yeah. the right thing to do and breastfed my tiny little crotch muffins that I plagued the earth with. <laughs> and, you know, this is what they do. They, they turn around and stab me right in the back. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, they stab you in the titty. In the mm -hmm. titty. And then they squish it. And, um, <laughs> but after <laughs> a few days after the surgery, they gave me a call and said, so, the biopsy results from this, and, and at this point, they test the entire lesion, not just, you know, tiny little boob noodles. They're testing the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so they were yeah. like, okay, so, um, you know, it was the results are a little different than what we expected. We saw that there was a radial scar there, which is what we knew before, and there were papillomas, which we knew about before, which were our base, where they're strange growths inside your milk ducts. Um, hmm. They already knew about that from the first biopsy, but they found something else. 
they found something called lobular carcinoma in situ or LCIS. And that means that I had little tiny cancer cells that were inside of the, um, the milk glands, but that they had not spread outward. So it's not invasive carcinoma. They don't consider it cancer. They consider it like a precancer, if you will. Um, and it comes with a fairly high risk of developing breast cancer in either breast over the duration of your lifetime. So I got told that I now have a 57% chance of developing breast cancer over my lifetime. And genetic screening was highly advisable and I'm still waiting for the results of that. <laughs> and oh yeah. Um, they wanted to put they want to put me on chemo prevention medication and I will have to be in touch with an oncology office for the rest of my life <laughs> probably like they're going to they're going to oversee the care and order the the necessary tests I'll have to have annual mammograms and annual MRIs on my breast tissue the first mm. MRI is in about four and a half months <laughs> dude so, I'm, just, but like, I'm so glad they caught this yeah. early though yeah that's what yeah. i was saying they this is why mammograms time. don't miss your mammograms ladies mm -hmm. do your no. mammograms. I, I, and... i'm i'm in sin because i haven't done mine yet i got the notice that i need to schedule it and like a year ago and i haven't done it yet but like Jen has inspired me. Like I gotta go get my titty, <laughs> my titty pictures. Yeah, get your titty <laughs> yep. pictures. Mm -hmm. Definitely get them. And you know whatever is in there, just face it. If if it yeah. ever comes along, um, but you know sometimes life can surprise you, and it and this did surprise the hell out of me because I've even despite being overweight and having polycystic ovarian syndrome and having ADHD, um. I have never been considered unhealthy by doctors. I have continued to exercise. And even though I'm overweight, I am still healthy. None of my labs have ever come back abnormal for anything. Um, so, you know, as far, and as far as we know, there is no breast cancer in my family or any um, other cancer except colon cancer. It's the only one that we've been able to track. And that we're not sure if that's a f familial genetic thing or if that was random. So um, to hear that I have such a high chance of developing breast cancer over my lifetime, it basically just took all of the air out of my lungs. I was just like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Like 57%, that's almost 60%. That's like, like very close to if not when, or like when not if, like, because most yeah. people say yeah. if I ever get it, or if this happens, but with me, it's almost to the territory of when. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, you almost feel like you're waiting for that moment when something worse is going to happen. And every single time I had an appointment, and I had so many medical appointments this, <laughs> this summer, um, I just expected to hear something new and worse and it makes you kind of paranoid and it makes you feel panicky. So my anxiety went through the roof. My depression mm -hmm. also kicked up. I felt kind of hopeless for a minute. Um, even though I didn't have like cancer proper, um, I was, I still had cancer light <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. and by the time I went in to see a medical oncologist, they, uh, the person that I was speaking to said, this was probably in there since you were in your like thirties, maybe even your twenties because of how large it was. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> Could you and feel it? Could you feel no. the lump? Oh. No, no, because some breast lumps you can't feel, especially if you have dense breast tissue like I do. So yeah. if I had breast tissue that was not dense, I would probably have been able to feel it. Um, mm -hmm. and, in fact, once I knew where it was, um, I, I had a, a period and my breasts kind of, you know how they kind of like swell up just a little tiny bit and like they kind of ache a little bit. I could feel where it was after I already knew where it was. Mm. But because dense, press, dense breast tissue can feel kind of lumpy for completely normal reasons, um, that's all it felt like was just a teeny tiny, you know, not even like a 
a pronounced bump. Like I really had to sit there and go, oh yeah, maybe that is what that is. It still mm -hmm. wasn't too apparent. So um, yeah, so this stuff can kind of take you by surprise. And um, if you are up for a mammogram, definitely don't delay <laughs> because um, you could regret that later <laughs> because if I they said that if I had left this until I was 50 chances are it would have developed into a lobular carcinoma by that point an invasive one and then I would have been dealing with actual breast cancer possibly a double mastectomy um, which is still on the table by the way <laughs> that's another thing uh, mm. part of this lovely shitstorm summer is they're not sure yet whether they're going to suggest a double mastectomy and full hysterectomy for me. Well, um, I would assume that that would come with your genetic testing, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to know the results of the genetic test. Um, given the fact that the chance was as high as it was, um, the medical oncologist said, we're going to just not start treatment until we know the results of the test because there's a chance that we might just have to take everything anyway. And then, you know, you wouldn't have to take this medication that has some potentially toxic side effects. Um, so, you know, he was all for waiting and, you know, and seeing what happened with that genetic test since it only, it takes, you know, maybe like a month to get yeah, back. Right. Um, so still waiting and we'll see what happens there. But that well, has been my summer yeah hopefully you don't have to uh hopefully those genetic tests come back and it's you know your risk goes down but oh well it won't go yeah. down my risk won't go down um it can only go up from here <laughs> that's the... either way you'll you'll have more information you know yeah. to know what to do <laughs> yeah so that's yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, hoping it yeah. doesn't go up because if it goes up, then we're dealing with when, not if. And then that's where they say uh, it's, you need a ma double mastectomy because you're not going to escape this. It's so um, hard when you're, I, I'm realizing you guys are both in situations where you're just kind of waiting, you know, you're ooh, waiting yes. for your dad's trial. You're waiting for your test results. It's so hard when you're in that spot where all you can do mm -hmm. is just hurry up and wait. You know, and you feel like yeah. you can't control it no matter what you do. Well, That's so hard to do. And deal you with. feel you feel guilty just living your your daily life, at least in my situation. Like you feel guilty living your daily life. You feel guilty going out and doing things because, you know, he's stuck and mm -hmm. there's no answers for yeah. him. And so it's like mm -hmm. you have to yeah. you have to really balance like, you know, I can't control his situation and but that shouldn't mm -hmm. he wouldn't want it, you it, to not live your life too you know right i mean yeah, yeah. but yeah so, that's it's almost like survivor's yeah. guilt i yeah, guess yeah i was just thinking that, that yeah it's almost like survivor's yeah. guilt and if we know anything about adhd brains it's that waiting for answers and Ugh. waiting for the next step is not Ugh. something we're good at so no you know in the <laughs> midst of the turmoil that we've all experienced this summer um you know a couple of us to a little bit more interesting degree <laughs> um, <laughs> it it's gotten just the waiting feels overwhelming but also all the learning that you have to do about a new situation feels overwhelming because you have to learn fast in both mm -hmm. me and Annette's situation you gotta mm -hmm. learn lightning fast and hey, we have learning disabilities look at that um <laughs> so <sighs> We're, uh, you know, it's just, it's one of those moments in life where you're like, you don't ad assume that ADHD can affect your legal status or a family member's legal status or your medical health, but it sure can. And there is a lot yeah. about the, um, the conflict between ADHD and cancer care that I'd like to touch on in a different podcast. You know, obviously mm -hmm. this one's going on quite long as it is but um but there there is more to talk about and i know that annette's going to have more to talk about about how adhd has affected the process with not even just her legal issues but her family members legal issues so mm -hmm. you know there's definitely 
like we we kind of took a break because all of this stuff was combining and it kind of all hit us at one time <laughs> and mm -hmm. we were like okay we need to take a break from the podcast for our own sanity because we have a lot to learn and adjust to in a very short period of time and that's also why we didn't do, we didn't update hardly anything when we left we're like okay cool we're dropping it like you know yeah. just for a minute yeah. impulsive um, decision as uh, yeah. as per used yeah that's how we so, roll sorry about not communicating well but we hey, um, it's an ADHD we were all... podcast you know it what is. are we gonna do it, clearly yeah. and we're not masking here so no we don't do that no. anymore yeah so it's like just like, um, yeah just like how I, I i don't know just like have grace for us because like you know yeah. when you know we're we're in crisis we were in crisis and you know unfortunately it's like just going through what we went through was exhausting was mentally exhausting for me i'm sh yeah. i know it was mentally exhausting for mm -hmm. you know yeah. losing your job is hard you know yeah and the yeah insecurity, that's exhausting too yeah mm -hmm. the insecurity of not knowing what's going to happen next that's that's yeah. stress it's something you will constantly think about mm -hmm. and it it's exhausting all of this is just it's mentally exhausting but mm -hmm. that's not an excuse. We're not making an excuse. Mm -hmm. Just uh, we're just asking <laughs> yeah. for grace. Yeah, yeah, we're asking for uh, forgiveness, everyone, um, and just a little bit of understanding. And there, there are times when, you know, later on, if I have to have a huge series of very large surgeries, you know, there might be more times when either I'm missing or we're all missing, or you know, like if Annette's. Um, Try, her father's trial is longer than expected or if it ends up clashing like we might have weeks where we don't create a podcast during those times and sometimes it might just be we're missing one sometimes we might miss two or three weeks in a row it just like right now there are a few things that are we just don't know what's going to mm -hmm. happen and, I mean this um, is this is our yeah. hobby we are doing this for fun we're yeah. not you know yeah yeah it's for our not... mental health let's come exactly, on exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. just like yeah. with any hobby you have to let that hobby work for you if it takes over your life then it's not fun <laughs> it's not really yeah, we have time... to monetize it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and we're gonna we're gonna talk about some fun uh some fun stuff coming up we're gonna you know our podcast is gonna get sometimes a little more serious and sometimes a lot more light than it has been mm -hmm. so we're kind of we yeah we're gonna have fun with this and you know we're looking forward to you guys joining us on the journey yeah, yeah. thanks Absolutely. everyone yeah so thank you for being here again and thank you for riding out that uncomfortable wave of silence that we threw your way and hopefully we won't have too many breaks in the future because we really do love producing all this content for everybody and um, it makes us feel good that that we feel like we're helping other people. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, if you've, if you've listened this far, just thank you again. You rock. You rock. Yeah. We mm -hmm. love you all. And Basel time. Basel time.